Hello and welcome to Called Bank Sports. Tonight, the Utah Jazz absolutely annihilated the Golden State Warriors by a final score of 111 to 85. And this game was just an absolute roller coaster ride for the first three quarters. The Jazz um, didn't score for the first three minutes of the first quarter. Um, they were down by 13. And then Azabuki got a dunk to be able to, um, <laughs> to, you know, put the Jazz's first two points on the board. And then they were able to come back in the second quarter, take a lead and take a decent lead to the half. I believe they were up by six points going into the half. And the Jazz had some good momentum um, against a shorthanded Warriors team um, who I believe are missing Draymond Green and Clay Thompson right now. And so it looked like things were going well. And then the Jazz allowed Golden State to come out, um, go on a run and take the lead relatively early on in the third quarter. And then the Jazz put their foot on the gas and never looked back. Um, I, when I looked at the line today, um, the betting line was Jazz by two. And I frankly wasn't expecting that even with the injuries um, and even with the Jazz playing well these last few games, I said, look, still Steph Curry. Um, it's a team that the Jazz have struggled with um, when they've played them two times, the two previous times this year. And they were able to come out, play with a lot of energy. Um, Trent Forrest, Azabuke, um, had both had really, really good games. Um, now, as a, now Udoka's game was pretty good when you look just straight at the box score until you get to the plus minus. He played 19 minutes five of five from the field, um, one of two from the free throw line, um, five total rebounds. Um, he had one block, did have a couple turnovers, but he did end up being minus nine. Um, he was the worst starter when it came to plus minus. Mike Conley was at minus one. And then everyone else for the Jazz was in the positive, except for Jared Butler, who was at minus four in his four minutes. But um, it has been incredible to see um, Doak basically just kind of grow over these last few games that he's been able to get some starting time with Gobert being out. And it makes me really wonder um, when the Jazz move on from Hassan Whiteside next year, if they do, of course, Hassan could decide to re-sign for um, a pretty low price. But I think his goal is to use this as a springboard to get maybe to another starting role in the NBA or to make some more money that I'm not sure if the Jazz will be able to or will be willing to pay him but wondering if Doak can step in and take some backup minutes. I, I don't think he's there quite yet, but he definitely has a lot of potential. I know a lot of Jazz fans weren't necessarily excited about um, when Utah picked him, but I think that, it, he, that he could have a lot of play. Um, he's going to get his rookie extension here um, at some point. It's obviously, I don't think, going to be a max deal. I don't think anyone expects that. And to be able to have him to pair behind Rudy Gobert and to possibly be the heir apparent, depending on how things go. Um, obviously, Rudy Gobert could still have another, you know, eight to 10 years left. I don't know if he's going to make it that long. I don't know how long his body can hold up, but it's been awesome watching um, Doak and really also just awesome watching um, Trent Forrest. In 23 minutes, he was five for nine from the field. Um, he was 0 of three from three. We know that that's not a strong shoot, strong suit. And hopefully he can improve there. But really, just overall, he was plus 23. So while maybe offensively with only 11 points, it's not entirely what we would, what we might hope from him. But I think 11 points off the bench is great, especially when you realize he was five of six for two um, in the game. Just watching him be able to bring that um, defensive presence and be able to help the Jazz on a front that they really struggle with is just great. Um, he's obviously not, I, I don't know if he's going to be a starter anytime soon. I don't know, um, if he's going to improve enough to, since where he could really fit in is he could fit in, um, and eventually might take Royce O'Neal starting minutes. Obviously that's kind of out there. Um, I do think it's a while out, especially with Royce's ability to hit three point shots that Forrest just doesn't have right now. It is really nice to see Forrest pick up some of, um, Joe's minutes. So. It's it'll be I'll be interested to see. Um, obviously, can't finish without talking about Hassan Whiteside and Donovan Mitchell, um, both playing with Jazz fans again and getting so close, but yet so far from a triple double. 
Um, it's been a while since there's been a regular season triple double double for Utah. I think it's coming up on 15 years. So Mitchell ended up with 14 points, um, 10 rebounds and eight assists. So a couple assists shy and Whiteside ended up with nine points. So needed another point, um, 17 rebounds and seven blocks. So Donovan was the closest and one day he's going to pick up his first triple double and we'll all be excited when it happens. But Overall, just really fun win for the Jazz. Um, they absolutely dominated the Warriors in multiple categories in the team stats as well, which I will get to if I can actually get my computer to work. They took 11 more shots than the Warriors. They made 13 more shots than the Warriors. Um, the Warriors actually had a pretty good game, um, well, a relatively okay game from behind the arc. They shot 16 of 43 um, for 37%. And the Jazz made 17 of 51 for 33%. So, okay game for the Jazz from three, but really volume is just what sealed this game um, for the Jazz. They were able to get a lot more possessions and utilize those to completely dominate the Warriors. Um, when you look at the free throw line, the Jazz had, they had the same amount of free throws. The Jazz made one less than the Warriors. Uh, but really, when you get down to it, if I can find it, the Jazz had eight more offensive rebounds which contributed a lot to the Jazz getting off 11 more shots. And the Jazz had 12 turnovers to the Warriors, 13 turnovers. So overall, like, I know I get this as a shorthanded Warriors team, but just any win right now is good for um, Utah, right? They have their four-game winning streak in the month of February. I think this was probably a really big hump to get over. Uh, their next two games are against Orlando, then Houston. The Jazz have did drop a game to Orlando. They um, struggled against Houston at times this year. I think it'll be really big for the Jazz to go out and put those teams away. And then the last game before the All-Star break is going to be the Lakers. So if the Jazz are able to go into the All-Star break undefeated in February, I think that'll just give them a lot of juice um, coming out of that and making the final stretch to be able to try to improve their seating. Right now they're still sitting at four, um, 5.38. Um, still, still likes the Jazz um, in certain aspects. They predict they do predict the Jazz to end up with the fourth seed, um, two games behind the Grizzlies, but they are giving the Jazz the third highest chance to win the final still um, in the league with fourteen percent. So, obviously, I'd love to see a higher percent here, but really, fourteen percent is, I mean, a fighting chance, right? They do like the Suns and Bucks better, but. Things can happen now, and we're going to see what happens with the trade deadline. Um, we, Dale and I talked last week about how we thought Joe was going to be gone, and we talked about um, what he meant to the team. So please go check out that video. It should be on the end card here in a second. We will be talking about um, – we'll be getting an episode this Friday talking about the trades. I'm talking about the trade deadline as a whole, and so please give that a look on Saturday. We really appreciate you guys following. I'm sorry if this um, post game has been a bit scatterbrained. I'm just been – trying to get my thoughts together. So <laughs> I'm so sorry, trying to get my thoughts together. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please leave a like wherever you're at. Um, give us a follow. Um, we love to continue the conversations in the comments. So thank you guys so much and go jazz.